This is also how I feel about people that like post spoilers and comments too. <laughs> like, why don't you let me get there in the story first? Why, why do you have to try to beat me there before the story can beat me? Uh, uh, listen, everybody's getting beat down, but only one person feels like they have an advantage over the other. Hey everyone, how's it going? Noxidar here, and welcome to the next reaction. A Delicious in Dungeon, episode 18. I have no idea how they are going to get Fallon back. Like, at least before she was like a jumble of bones and still humanoid. Now she's this amalgamation chimera-like creature that is really powerful. And, th and then, like, when all the chaos is happening and Lyos is just standing there staring at her, first off thinking she's amazing, then jealous at her, <laughs> the, the range of emotions, or lack thereof, is so comedic to me. I love it. I also got really excited because it looked like we were going to have, like, a full raiding party, and it's like, oh, yeah, this is the Mad Mage. Oh, my God, just talk normal. Then a Fallon creature rolls up and destroys almost everybody. And now our party finds itself back to four, venturing into the unknown. And that will be the same for us with this reaction. So without any further ado, let's get right to it. The sixth floor, underground waterways that utilize tunnels dug by ancient dwarves. They appear to stretch out endlessly laying themselves under the town like the roots of a tree. Besides the water, many things likely flowed through here. Humans and animals, conspiracies and rumors, Ooh. money and blood. I love this narrator. Maybe we ended up somewhere else? I think I remember this road from before. Yeah, this is definitely the floor where the red dragon attacked us. I mean, it is a dungeon where walls and roads move around. The temperature changing isn't that strange. I'd imagine this cold is pretty tough on red dragons. Wait, is that why she had feathers? Fallon said she was looking for someone named Delgol. I imagine the Mad Mage had given the red dragon that same order. That's also the reason the red dragon came up to a different floor and wandered around without resting. Yep. Who's Delgol? When the Golden Country fell 1,000 years ago, he was their last ruler. When this dungeon was initially discovered, he briefly appeared on the surface, became dust, and vanished. That's why he must have assumed we were assassins and started attacking us. Where'd you hear that from? A dream? Well, you see, I first met the Mad Mage inside of the living paintings. To have this all come full circle to the episode with the living paintings and seeing the Mad Mage and just like not really putting that together until now, I feel like was such a brilliant move. And I'm sure maybe there are people out there that are like, that called it, you know. I'm one of these people that if I always try to figure things out before I let the story unfold, I never give the story a chance to lead me there if I'm always trying to beat the story there first. This is also how I feel about people that like post spoilers and comments too. <laughs> like, why don't you let me get there in the story first? Why, why do you have to try to beat me there before the story can beat me? Listen, everybody's getting beat down, but only one person feels like they have an advantage over the other. What am I even saying? Anyways, I just think it's really cool to let a story naturally develop, to let a storyteller do what they do. I love that that's kind of come full circle now, and we're starting to see these elements that felt like one-off adventures within the story fully develop into, no, this was actually an integral part of the plot i think that's just really good and it just further speaks to the genius of a storyteller that ryoko kui is i really just don't think i can sing enough praises about how great this show is developing and man and that's where i learned about it i only put the pieces together just now yeah me too <laughs> so you were reliving the past maybe we can clear things up with him This is... We've multiplied! 
We'll reveal the fakes peacefully, and then deal with them all! His enthusiasm's great, but will he really be able to tell the difference between the real one and the fakes? The number of fakes remaining is six. When they're side by side, you can see lots of differences. But while we're figuring this out, our fuzzy memories are being influenced. When it comes to the Marcells, they have different hairstyles. So you remember it, don't you? Just look at it! The blizzard made me cold, so I took my hair down. First of all, my hair quality is way better. Hair is a magic user's life, you know. They're all saying things the real one would say. That's... <laughs> books is obviously fake no way the spells in her book are all messed up hey that's my line but Lyos knows some magic Senshi, mind showing your stuff <laughs> come up with the others we've narrowed it down to two each but we're at a standstill okay let's make food wait at a time like this i'll have all of you cook and observe how you do things that will tell me which are fake and which are real. He didn't know he encountered the Mad Mage or noticed Shuro's feelings. And we're gonna rely on his observational skills? This is bad. I have to pick up on the subtle differences no matter what. There's a possibility he might find the fakes more interesting because they're monsters. <laughs> I didn't even think about that. Is everyone ready? Let the cooking begin! First, the Chilchuck team. Chilchuck A sat in the hallway. Chilchuck B sat on top of a wooden box and started prepping. Now I'm questioning my own memory. A's a little cynical, don't you think? If you look closely, he's got some mean looking eyes. Our Chilchuck is definitely much cuter. Leave me alone! You know I'm the real one, right? Trying to persuade the judges here. Dumbass. Insulted me in the common language. Ooh. Marcel B is behaving normally, but maybe to a fault. <laughs> <laughs> Too convincing. Do I have to eat these harpy eggs to make you believe me? I mean, that is kind of the way that Marcel was talking the last time they were like sharing a meal. But Marcel definitely seemed more receptive to eating monsters. Oh, you know what it was? It was with the uh, it was with the dried flowers. So like while she still had some complaints about it, particularly eating out of that jack o' lantern uh, looking bowl i guess but she had no hesitation to eat the mandrake head which she had already previously eaten and that was something that you know we kind of picked up on on a second viewing and that's why sometimes as fun as it is doing reactions and experiencing things for the first time actively reacting to something versus passively watching is such a different experience i so i actually kind of enjoy going back over things i'd already watched before to kind of see them again and what I tend to notice is that, you know, when I'm so busy trying to string together sentences, which admittedly for me in the common language, pretty hard, <laughs> and I can just kind of lose myself in the experience of the storytelling and not always have to kind of be analyzing things and picking things apart in real time. Um, that is definitely something that I learned when stepping into the reaction arena that there is kind of a... A skill you almost need to have a kind of willful ignorance to be like I'm not gonna get everything but I'm gonna f I'm gonna take something hold on to it see what I can do with it and try to take as much in to either build up this idea before I share it so I kind of equate it as like spinning plates it's like I'm I'm watching I'm trying to enjoy this story take it all in for the first time learn about it uh, consider what people are saying consider how it like pertains to me in my personal life how this could have like a general application nuggets of wisdom something that i can take away from it something that i can talk about to elevate the whole production i mean i always tell people like if i talk slowly or i'm i'm yapping it's because i am literally an open fire hydrant and ideas and stream of consciousness is just flowing out at such a rapid rate that sometimes I lag in real life because I'm just getting DDoSed by my own brain. That's crazy. That more calm demeanor within Marcel seems a little closer to the Marcel that we previously saw. However, like <laughs> the Marcel that's like flying off the handle is pretty convincing and like Lyo said maybe too convincing 
Interesting. I love this. This is great. They both said things the real one would say. Back to the Sentry team. I came across a nest inside of a collapsed house. So I gathered everything that was there. Wait a minute. As they say. Nope. No, I'm pretty confident Senshi's always had the, like, redness in his nose. Beyond the fact that that didn't even sound like Senshi. This one's pretty easy to put away. Doesn't Senshi V look a little more attractive than he should? <laughs> <laughs> Seems fine to me. Yeah, Senshi's always looked handsome. Yeah, come on, Senshi doesn't look that dopey. Senshi is handsome. Noted. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> See, they're influencing the judge. Honestly, I have no idea. They all look like they could be real. It would have been fun to look for a monster disguised as a human. Trying to see through an illusion is look for a monster, huh? It's ready. Oh my gosh. All right. Listen up while you eat. It's so silly to me that I'm going on and on about the color of these foods and how vibrant and amazing they are. Because the truth is, when I lived in Japan, every time like a big spread or meal would come out, like especially around, you know, the end of year celebration with Bonankai and things like that. One of the constant comments that the teachers that I worked with would always say is um, colorful, you know, <laughs> so colorful. Look at these colors. Oh, it's beautiful. <laughs> and so here I am doing the exact same thing. These are the moments that I really enjoy most about reactions and hopefully when I get a chance to go back through it's kind of like a form of scrapbooking in a digital sense where I get to relive these memories and these feelings and the things that that are tangentially related yet become these clear precise memories and now that Japan is becoming further and further in my rearview mirror from the experience of having lived there, I do think being able to hold on to these memories are so much more especially important. So when I'm able to go back through and watch these and see the cultural influence of like an anime and then also be able to relive and re-experience these memories that maybe have become fuzzy, it's really funny that we're talking about this when we're dealing with shapeshifters and fuzzy memories and perceptions of things. So, yeah, this is really good. Uh, it's like I am Lyos noting down my own remembrances of things like that. But, yeah, just the colors and everything is so awesome. I love it. I love these connections that I'm able to make with these shows. And those are the things that I really want to share and help elevate the experience for other people that are watching my reactions as well. It's it's fulfilling. <laughs> it's such a fulfilling experience. Those of you I think are real are Chilchuck A, Marcel B, Senshi A, the dopey one. What kind of proof do you have that he's a real one? That one's obviously the imposter. What makes you think she's real? I'm just a feeling. I don't think he's right about Chilchuck because I think Chilchuck has big brown eyes, and I only remember this because of one of the thumbnails that I put for, I think, episode two. I used a really big shot of Chilchuck, and he definitely had, like, shining brown eyes. I still find Marcel to be challenging because I see both instances of being a little more calm in the situation as, like, a showing of her maturation but at the same time her flying off the handle does seem to be pretty much the way she would respond i would have a, i would struggle personally with this one <laughs> i guess i didn't pay too close attention um but i do remember her having more braids in her hair so maybe he got that one right so definitely um chill chuck he's wrong marcel i think he might be right Senshi, he's definitely right um, poor Senshi, bit of a dope, but we love him. I'll try to explain all of that later. This was inevitable, no matter who I picked. There's no way that monsters are able to cook food. It must be creating an illusion like Marcel said. The enemy's waiting for us to wear ourselves out. Guess I'll have to take a page from the enemy. Time to turn the tables and make the hunter feel like the hunted. It's been a while, but I'll do that. Let's go, Lyos. <laughs> Wait, what are you doing? 
Oh, he does have a good impression of a dog. Wait, a hunting dog? His superpower. Really is. <laughs> Everyone, look, the Ooh, I would have got that wrong. I would have got Chill Chuck wrong too. <laughs> All right, Lyos. Right in the head, that is. <laughs> Hard to believe that Lyos's intuition was actually on the nose. So, how did you tell us apart? Well, first, Chilchuck sat on a wooden box. Boxes are the perfect hiding spot for mimics and tentacles. For you to not even worry about that kind of stuck out to me. So, I gathered everything that was there. For someone who respects the balance of an ecosystem. Ah. Yep. Lastly, when Marcel dumped the boiling water. After how you were attacked by that Undine, doing something like that seemed reckless. That's why it caught my attention. Interesting. I didn't even consider that. It was that absent-mindedness that made me think you were the real one. <laughs> uh, pretty sure there were tea leaves in the bag of provisions we got. Definitely put it right here. The rice. Empty. Marcel! Boop. Drop your weapon and freeze. Do that and we can talk peacefully. Ah. Uh, this makes sense. Yeah, you can see it right there on the wrist. So that was the hand that grabbed Marcel uh, when they were freezing. I thought it was Rin because that seemed like that was her colors. I guess, again, you can see how much I really closely paid attention to design and stuff. Yeah, it makes sense. She wasn't with Shudo's party when they left and he's mentioned something about how like if she was gonna come back She would find her way back So I'm actually kind of curious to see how she's playing into this She did always kind of seem distrustful of them. Maybe she's after Marcel because she did overhear about the use of black magic Interesting. What a crazy development. We're gonna have to find out in the next episode. But I definitely think I've said enough about how I feel about this show already this episode. So we'll save that for the next one. All I know is that when I reach the end of this season, it is definitely going to put a hole in my heart. And it's like such a... And doing reaction... Uh, now granted, I've only finished one series that I've started and that was the Percy Jackson one. But the feeling is all familiar, even as someone who watches shows. There's always that sense of, like, emptiness once you finish a series or a season or something, and then you're in the waiting game, or you have no more to watch. I, I definitely felt that when I finished Vikings. And I have to say, but on the other hand, as a reactor doing the reaction side of things particularly with you know Percy Jackson and stuff like that I also feel really fulfilled because I had set out to provide these reactions and then also to kind of take in this journey and I completed what I set out to do from the onset and then I also had to wrestle with that emptiness until the next season and I know this is very much going to be the same so as we count down to the end of the season here and the story starts to ramp up towards the end of it it definitely becomes like a whirlwind of emotions but i think that's all we have for today i'll see you in the next one this is noxidar out have a good one